We're back with some competitive commander gameplay magic. Me, Pontus and Rhetoric, this time joined by Beer. Hello everybody, thank you for having me again. Excited to be here and play uh, good old good old decks with you all. But me, Pontus and Rhetoric are doing a special. We're uh, celebrating Ewell's birthday. This is his birthday present. We're literally playing his decks and I call dips on them the good one. <laughs> So here we have Juuld Lutus. This is his Björn. It's a Swedish term for two crap. CDH Vernog uh, Björna Turbo. But in any case, it's Vernog and Björna, which makes a pretty cool combo together with various different tricks. For example, Cloudstone Curio, a little bit different art than I'm used to, together with Dockside Extortionist and one of his basically two CMC commander. From there you can generate infinite treasures and then draw your entire decklist and win with something like Fastest Oracle. Sometimes you can even play Hullbreaker Horror, but that's a little bit tricky if you also want to play Ad Nauseum. But other than that, it's kind of similar to a Tumna Kram build, but it's opening up a little bit more combos. The good old blue farm team Akram. I'm back on Atnas. I removed Atnas from my deck for probably six months to try it a little bit without it due to mid range hell. Uh, but I'm back on it and I added a few uh, of the turbo, turbo pieces back as well to try to accelerate the games uh, because that's what I feel the meta has been changing into. Adding, of course, uh, some of the new blue cards from uh, Bloomboro. The one, the what, the, the one that clones, the one that steals, uh, and um, and uh, I think I added. Oh yeah, the the blue Ristic study, the Polywalk Prodigy, which uh, in a couple of the games that I've tried, it's 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 been working great. So uh, I'm gonna keep trying that one. Uh, so yeah, other than that, is uh, good old Blue Farm with as a circle consulta the money consultation or breach lines. So I'm playing UL Stivitek, which is a lot more. Richie than most other tribute lists. You're on a, I think you said five or six clones to like clone Tivit and like kind of clone Storm, which is kind of cool. But other than that, it's just a classic mid range Tivit build. So let's try it. And me, I am on Yuriko. I have been destroyed by this deck so many times by my friend Sarah. And so super happy to try Yule's version. We have just a little, some, a couple updates for, I've seen here and basically from Modern Horizons. Generally, we're just looking to do some uh, amazing tricks and so forth with Demir cards. This hand kind of tells me a lot about myself, which is funny because this hand is perfectly fine, but I don't want to keep it. My biggest issue is the inherent like fighting this hand has. Like, I, I want to develop a turn one fish, but I also want to develop a turn one soul ring. And as the hand is right now, they're exclusive. And as a follow up, if I do the turn one soul ring, I can do turn two fish plus demonic tutor. But my demonic tutor doesn't really enable anything I really want to do the next turn. This hand is like really solid, but because it's a first seven and not perfect, I very much want to mulligan it. <laughs> and that's interesting to me. But in this deck and in this kind of pod, I think this is the type of hand you're supposed to keep. Yuriko doesn't really feed fish, but we are developing a fish before Blue Fog or Timnagram and Bjorn and Vernog. So that's really good. So I'm just being lazy and keeping this. I do want the Milligan though. I, it's not even a joke. I just hate first sevens, I guess. I, or more, I hate first sevens that don't actively win me the game. Because this is kind of... It's mid that winning the game, I guess. Oh well, keeping a first seven that I'm not happy with. But I kind of am still. Okay. I'm worried. Sorry. Okay, let's see what kind of hand are we re-getting. Okay, first hand. A whole lot of lands. Atnas in hand. Just a Lotus Petal. Uh, definitely not something I want to go for. No... Yeah, very, very slow. Land drops are assured, but uh, I don't want to wait that long. Let's move on. Second hand. Okay, we have, I think, a good amount of mana with Ancient Tomb. Dark Ritual, but I don't have any colored mana. And no way to generate it 
other than Dark Ritual. I would be betting on drawing into a card that produces black so that I can do some, but even then, that's it. I mean, it's just black mana, black mana, nothing to play the Grand Abolisher or the Storm Drake. So yeah, let's move on. Let's go down to six. No lands, first of all, so I'm gonna have to ship it. This is interesting. Two lands with Darkseid. I have Jessica's Will and Ragavan. Imperial Seal. I think this is good enough. I need to ship two cards from here. Bottom of library. Move to bottom of library. And we're done. So this hand is not that hot. There's nothing really to do here. Like we can't even cast Necropotence here. Like the dream is, or the only thing that it has, it's not actually something you have to throw away because we could just use the Phantasmal Image to gain a Dockside Extortionist. And with that, we can cast Necropotence. And we already have Final Fortune in the hand. So the hand is great, theoretically. If it actually had like a Dark Ritual, I would feel a little bit more secured in playing this. Because yes, what I just described could theoretically happen, but there's a chance that I'm gonna be sitting with this hand and just doing nothing. This is actually pretty good though. Or, well, it's not great either, honestly. We have Spring... So we will have Crow, Mox, Mox, Opal, and Spring Leaf Drum. Mox, Opal will be live turn one. And we have to draw a card that we can actually imprint into Chrome Box for that to work. But we'll have like a will really early. And from that, we are going to have four mana turn two, three mana turn five. But there's a lot of mana here. There's a lot of potential cards we could just accidentally draw into. That will be great. And if we draw into a ritual here, we can cast Adnos. So it feels like whatever we draw from this point, it will basically work out. Except lands. If we draw a land, that would be terrible. In the end, actually going to keep this. And hope I will make you will proud. Let's start the match. I will kick us off. Let's draw a card. Flooded Strand as it land for turn. Go ahead and fetch an underground sea. Underground sea in the battlefield. I'll tap it and cast a fairy seer. Fairy seer resolves. I'll scry two. Bottom this one. Okay, and then I'll put this on top. And with that, I'll pass. Go to my turn. Land for turn will be a Bloodstained Mire, which I will fetch. Finding a Unrun Sea, tapping it for a Soul Ring. Want this, I'm going to mental this step that. <laughs> Start targeting Soul Ring. <laughs> That's sad. It's countered, and I pass. I'll take my turn. I'm going to start with Art Mesa, that I will tap and pay a life to go fetch Badlands. Close and shuffle. Then I'd like to use that Badlands to cast an Imperial Seal. I'll lose to life and then go search again. Right here, this is a card I found. And that's it, that's gonna be my turn. I'll pass to you. I hope to draw Ragavan. Draw a card first. I'm going to do Mox Opal. Let's go Marsh Flats. Sacrifice Marsh Flats. Finding an Underground Sea. Casting a Chromox in printing a Rite of Flame. Will the Wise or Vernog, two different options of it in any case. I'm gonna make a clue. Redrick, do you wanna have a clue? Sorry, I, I forgot that I also need to put this Springleaf Drum into play with the Chromox to make a Mox Opal active. So I have Metalcraft now with a with the Springleaf Drum. will lose a life. I will lose a life too. Yeah, as for me, I will lose a life as well. My opponents are boring. I will get one clue, but I'm not feeding any dock sites, I guess. Pass. Untap and draw. Land for turn is a Shizo Death Storehouse to combat. Attacking bear for one damage. Oh no! I'm gonna have to declare no blockers on that. Sweet. We'll tap these two and flip in Yuriko with its new jitsu ability. So you'll take one damage and we will reveal the top card. It's a Thassa's Oracle. So two damage to everyone. I will pass my turn. Take my turn. Land for turn will be a Erd Mesa which I will fetch, finding a Tundra, tapping two to cast a Arcane Signet. Tap Signet to cast a Mystic Remora. And with Fish and Play, I'll pass turn. I will take my turn. Hmm, I wonder who put that card in the in the top of my library. Windship Heat, a slant for turn. I'd like to pay a life and sacrifice that to go search for a card. I think Tundra is the right one to cast a Dockside. I'm feeding it a tiny bit. Pass. I think that gives me a total of six treasures by my count. Cast a Rhystic Study. Trigger Fish. 
Ninja police. I will, um, <laughs> I will exile fairy seer to force a negation in your risk study. Oh my gosh. Uh, Trigger fish. I can't pay for fish. Already. I have no responses to force of negation. Well, I guess that's going to be it. Yeah, I have no more actions. Uh, I'd like to move to Inset and pass. I'm going to play a polluted delta and pass. Take my turn. Let's send Yuriko at Pontus. No blocks. Great. Damage happens. We'll reveal. Fourth Bridge Prowler says you may have target creature get plus one, plus one, or uh, negative one, negative one until end of turn. So everybody takes one damage. Put this into play. The Fourth Bridge Prowler. I think, unfortunately, I do want to feed fish one time. Um, I'm going to play a Soul Ring as well. I will pass otherwise. Go to my turn. In my upkeep, fish will trigger, and I will pay to keep fish around. Then I'll drop a turn. Land for turn will be a Ancient Tomb. Tap Ancient Tomb, taking two. Tap Angron C to cast a Demonic Tutor. I'm afraid, yeah, I'm afraid it's going to make you sad. I'm going to, I'd like to crack my treasures for black to flash in an Oppo Agent. I have a response to this. I'm going to crack my fetch land just in response to that before that happens. But then I pass on the Oppo Agent. So I'm not sad about my Tutor getting countered. But it getting stolen is a whole different ballgame, which I'm not okay with. So I will pass an Oppo Agent, but in response to my Demonic Tutor, I will Psychrift the Oppo Agent. You can have it, just not now. I'm double sad. I'm gonna... Yeah, that's fine by me. I'm gonna put it back in my hand. So, as you can see in my hand, I wasn't really lying. This Demonic Tutor doesn't really have a plan. Saying I was fine with the Demonic Tutor being countered isn't really true, because I feel like we need to have the counters for other spells. But me not getting the tutor I was kind of fine with. This just Oppo Agent is too bad for me. But yeah, I don't really know what to get because like you might be thinking like Time Seam, but I, I don't have the mana to go off the Time Seam next turn. I have the mana to cast Tivit. That gives me five artifacts, a total of six, but I have to sacrifice two of them to cast Time Seam. So then I have to sacrifice Time Seam to take an extra turn. And on that turn, I can cast Roaming Throne. So like, I do have some play there. Also, if I draw any zero cost spell. Wait, I can. Wait, wait. I have a cool line. Do I take time seed? Anyways. Because what I can do, if I, if I don't use the pact, which I can't expect myself to use the pact, so I think Mons has some tricks, and I think my pact is going to be cast next turn, or before my next turn. So. Actually, I think I'm just fighting Mox Diamond. I think that's the best call, because then I have an offer. I do have two lands, and I don't really need more. And I think finding mana is my biggest. Thing here. I was thinking about the Jewel Dotters, I was thinking about Time Seed. None of those are great. I could have just find Rustic, but I think that's also a bit too slow, and I can just sustain my Mystic for more forever. So, actually, I think finding mana here to hopefully survive is the biggest, is the most correct answer. So, yeah, finally Mox Diamond, which is kind of weird. And after finding the card, I will cast this here Mox Diamond, discarding this here Scrubland, and then I'm passing the turn. Already, I wonder if what you found was the scrubland for your Mox Diamond. And take my turn. I have no great actions on my sleeve other than move to combat and attack Pontus for one with my dark side. No blocks. Take one. yoo -hoo. If that's cool, then I'll move to Incept and pass. So as you can see, we have Ad Nauseum and we could have cast it last turn, but I kind of won... I kind of prefer casting Adnos in the last opponent's end step, and then I get to go to my turn, untap everything, and hope for the win. Maybe I should have actually cast it in my turn, though, but there's a chance it will fizzle and not work out, and I will be sad. So, Pontus drew a bunch of cards, and he played a Mox Diamond? <laughs> it obviously also tutored for it. I later have no idea. Well, that was all about. Redrick has been firing off counterspell after counterspell after counterspell, so I'm getting a feeling he's out. He shouldn't have more. And if Pontus didn't tutor for like a Mox... I'm just guessing he tutored for a Mox Diamond, because he literally casted it uh, post his tutor. That's like one mana interaction he probably have here, I think. Well, that's what it feels like. Maybe I should have done Flare of Denial on the Deponic Tutor. I was actually keen on it, but I... I already have the card I kind of want to tutor for. Could have tutored for Inter... Ah, well, it doesn't matter. In the end, I think we're not going to, sack, to fire off the Ad Nauseum. I'm feeling strange vibes from Pontus. What we can do is potentially fire it off during someone's trying to win the game. Hopefully we will, like, establish more mana throughout this course of the match. 
and maybe draw into a bone upon the wind at the same time together with the ad nauseum, and with an instant speed above everyone else. So we might be leaning backwards and just trying to draw cards and accumulate value and watch these guys kill each other. Hope I don't die to this Yuriko, but we will see if it works out. Beer seems dead. So in your end step, I'm going to sacrifice this clue and draw a card. Then I'm gonna go to my turn and untap and draw a card. Play this Volcanic Island. I'm gonna pass the turn. Bloodstained Mire, and we'll fetch. Open that Oppo comes out. Taking two more to the dome to get Watery Grave. Tap that Watery Grave and cast a Wing Crafter. And I will have a Soul Bond with Yuriko. And I am going to attack Mons with my Flying Ninja. And I will send the Fourth Bridge Prowler at Bear. And now I regret attacking Pontus. So no blockers. I take one from Yuriko. Damage happens. And now we flip into a Dokuchi Silencer. A Human Ninja, 2-1. Those combat damage player you may discard a creature card if you do destroy target creature or planeswalker that player controls. You guys take two. I will pass the turn. Go to my turn. In upkeep, I will take two damage to pay for fish, and then I'll move to draw and draw a card. Land for turn will be a command card. Then I'll tap four to cast a weird card. I'll cast this roaming throne. Roaming throne resolves. And as it enters, I will name Rogue for the creature type. So now, any rogues I control will trigger twice. Sadly, I can't name fish because fish isn't actually fish. I wish. But that's uh, it for my turn. I will pass. Okay, I'll take my turn. Let's see what we get here. So I'm going to go ahead and tap my Tundra for a white Esper Sentinel. So that's it. It's going to be for my turn. I move to step and pass. I'm going to go to my turn and draw a card. I'm going to cast a Flesh Duplicate. Fellas. You too, Rhetoric. What do we think oh, there you he's are. doing? What do we think he's doing with this? He's making a lot of mana and trying to convert that into a victory. <laughs> I think he's going Sorry. for a dark side. <laughs> yeah, Mons, of course. Mons is obviously copying Yuriko. That's obviously <laughs> what he's doing. No, I think somebody, if you can, should kill my dark side. Otherwise, there's a lot of mana to be gotten yeah and the tough thing about this is it's you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of so there's no target right it just enters there's, there's no target so he'll just change yeah, what there's it no. does uh i have priority so i'm going to deadly relic the dock side just in case trigger esper sentinel bear because i've picked on you more um i will allow you to draw that from Esper Sentinel, and I will pay for fish with my Soul Ring and two mana. I'll draw a card, gone to exile. So they messed up my master plan, Dockside no more. I don't know exactly what we're going to do with this flesh duplicate. So we have some cool options. One, we could take Yuriko. Two, we could take an Esper Sentinel. Three, we could take the Roaming Throne. And if Pontus is going to play that Tivit next turn, we can Phyrex Phyrex and Metamorph into Tivit, literally and have double Tivit triggers, the same thing, thing Pontus is kind of doing here. What we really need here are basically card draw. So I think that we're going to take the Esper Sentinel. On the other hand, I don't know how much they're actually going to cost. Like, Redrick is costing creature spells, Pontus is costing Tivit, and I don't actually know if Bear is going to cost any thing. If I make it into a roaming throne and I... Like, my plan is not really to sit here and do Tivit anymore. I kind of want to resolve that Mimmon Betrayal. So I'm going to gamble that they are going to be able to cause some, feed my Esper Sentinel a bit here. So in the end, I'm going to take the Esper Sentinel. After this, I pass. We will untap, draw a card, move into combat. We will send Wingcrafter at Pontus. We will send Fourth Street Prowler at Bear. And we will send oh, yeah, Flying Yuriko at Mons. No response, no blocks. I take one. Nijitsu Wingcrafter, Dukuchi uh, Silencer. So Pontus will take two. I think I'll stack it so that I've got Yuriko's triggers first, and then I'll do Dukuchi's trigger. So we'll flip, and that is an underground river. And that's a silver raven, so you all take one. Now, I'll just say on the record, I totally forgot that Roaming Throne has Ward 3, and I have two. It's two. Oh, okay, okay. It's two. I was I was told uh, uh, off air that it has two. So I will pay two using the ability from uh, Dokuchi to discard Menmite. Menmite, yeah, to destroy Roaming Throne 
for my other game action, I will put an underground river into play. I'll just go ahead and pass. Good, my turn. Untap, upkeep, will pay for fish, taking two damage. Then we'll drop turn, and then we just pass the turn. Taking my turn, I drew into Verdant Catacombs, which I will be playing as my land for turn. And now I'm going to cast a Lotus Petal as my artifact for the turn. I'll pay for Esper with uh, this one here. And step and pass. Draw a card! I'm going to cast a Mnemonic Betrayal, not paying for fish or Esper Sentinel. In response to mean bet, I will cast a Pact Signation, not paying for any Esper Sentinels. Thank you. I will draw. I have no response to this. You have uh, pacted my Mnemonic Betrayal. I'm going to play a City of Traitors as a land drop. And here I'm gonna pass the turn. In your end step, I will take a damage, making a blue, to flash in a Spectral Sailor, and then I will move to my turn. Start things off, I am going to tap this Underground Sea, and I will play Wing Crafter again. Dissolving, I'll target the Dokuchi Silencer. I'll move to combat, and I will send this Flying Dokuchi Silencer at Mons. We will send Iriko at Pontus, and the 4th Street Prowler at Bear. No blocks. I think in response to attacks on me, I would like to pay one life and sacrifice my Verdant Catacombs. Underground Sea with that one. Sacrifice my Lotus Petal. I want to flash in an Opposition Agent. In response to Oppo, I will tap for Black to cast the Vampiric Tutor. Putting this card on top and losing two. Then I will move to Blocks and I will block the 1-1 one, one with my 3-2 Opposition Agent. I have no blocks, I take uh, two in the air. Great. This is dead. We have two triggers. We'll do Yuriko, then Dokuchi. So let's flip. First is a Fierce Guardianship. So three damage. The second is a Force of Despair. Now we have a trigger from Dokuchi Silencer. So I'll have it destroy your Esper Sentinel Mons card, though. Dead. Silver Raven will be discarded. Then I'm, I'm going to pass from there. Go to my turn. In upkeep, I have two triggers. First of all, I will choose to not die, so I will pay for Pacts. And then I don't have the mana to pay for fish, so fish will die. Then I'll drop a turn. Land for turn will be a Ursa Saga. Let's get a counter. And then I'll just pass my turn. Casting a Mana Crypt. Then I'd like to play these Marsh Flats as my land for turn. I'm going to pay three. One, two, and three to cast my commander, Timna the Weaver. Move into combat phase. Oppo Agent at Mons and Esper Sentinel at Pontus. Finally, I will block with my will. And before damage, I'm going to tap him with Springleaf Drum, floating a mana. No blocks, take one. Now, Will leaves the game, he will also trigger, and we will all make clues, of, uh, so to say. Or I will make a clue. Frederick, do you want to have a clue? I'm gonna be greedy and make a clue. I'll make a clue. I will make a clue. That means I make four clues! Sadly, the mana from the Springleaf Drum is gone. But yeah, four clues. Moving on to second main phase, uh, I'd like to pay one life and draw a card with Timna. Nothing else that I want to do, I will move to my end step and pass the turn. In your end step, I'm gonna tap this, sacrifice a clue to draw a card. And then I'm gonna tap these two, sacrifice a clue and draw a card. And then I'm gonna go to my turn, untap everything and draw a card. I'm gonna recast my will device. Here we go. Or uh, Bjorna. So I will make a clue as well. Let's go. YOLO. Clue train. I'll make a clue. You got it. Go for it. I should play Ursa High Lord Artificer inside this deck, honestly. <laughs> Some people might be skeptic about how much clues there are as I might be feeding Dockside, but the only available Dockside left in this game is in my deck. <laughs> I'm gonna tap this Springleaf Drum and Commanda and cast Soldering. Esprit can have a card. I'm gonna tap this soldering and sacrifice a clue and hope to draw a dockside. We didn't. We're gonna live the dream. We're gonna sacrifice another dockside. Uh, I'm another clue here to draw a dockside. That is not a dockside. <laughs> We're gonna play the Spire of Industry, sacrificing City of Traitors. We're gonna pay one life into this to make black mana, cause Dark Ritual. And with those two black mana, we're gonna sacrifice another clue to draw a card that is uh, not a dockside. <laughs> With our remaining black mana, we're gonna cost Snap tapping this volcanic island. I'm gonna bounce Oppo Agent. He has the mana to recast it, so that's horrible, but I'm 
still doing it. And I will untap these two lands for the snap. Play or cast a force of negation on your snap, exiling force of will. Pretty strong statement. But I just wanted to untap two lands. Yeah, that happens. Goes to exile. I didn't actually care about your oppo. I passed the turn. In Mons and Sep, I am uh, tapping Soul Ring and these two lands to sacrifice both clues. My opponent said they didn't have any responses, so I will draw two cards. One, two. And then we will untap. I'll put a Gemstone Caverns into play. We still have uh, Flying due to uh, Wingcrafter and Dokuchi Silencer. So what we'll do now is move to combat. I will send Yuriko and Spectral Sailor at Pontus, and I will send Wingcrafter and Dokuchi Silencer at Bear. No blocks. Yeah, no blocks on me. I'm in Chapins. Three damage. Two will go to Pontus, three will go to Bear. And I will do the flips, starting with Yuriko, and then Dokuchi Silencer. City Sewer, boo. And the second will be a Moth Dust Changeling for one. Wow, killing it. With Dokuchi Silencer's ability, I'm going to discard this Moth Dust Changeling to destroy Esper Sentinel. That is fine. I have no actions or responses to that activation. We're going to tap seven. Play a Psych... Just kidding. No, uh, Seagate Restoration. I think this is the first time anyone has actually done this on the channel. I'll respond to this. This is a bit too scary. Make you an offer you can't refuse. Exile Sync of Into Stupor and cast a Misdirection, changing the target of an offer you can't refuse to change the target to Misdirection. Misdirection resolves. I will respond to Seagate Restoration. I will tap Versus Saga and Mox to crack a clue. I'll draw a card and then I pass on Seagate Restoration. We'll cast a Dark Ritual. Three black mana on this and then use the three black mana and two more from Mana Crypt. I'd like to cast an Ad Nauseum. Fierce Guardianship. Oh, that hurts. I was just gonna kill myself, but also try to stop you. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. Mm, heart attack, fellas, heart attack. All right, Seagate Restoration resolves. I will draw four more cards. Five. Yes, five. One, two, three, four, five. I have no maximum hand size, so I will pass the turn. Go to my turn. Make a counter on my Ursa Saga. I'll take three damage. Activity to be on the stack. We'll respond to the ETB by I'll exile uh, Fell the Profane to cast Force of Despair, which is destroy all creatures that, that entered the battlefield this turn. I'll just pass on Force of Despair. Tivit goes to Command Zone, and then we resolve the ETB. No way! So it's been results, and fun enough, I can't do it twice because my tilt is dead. But I will just make a treasure, and the rest of the guys gives me clues. I'll tap two to cast a time seed. Time seed resolves, and I'll tap it, sacrificing four clues and my treasure to take an extra turn. Go to my next turn, and in my main phase, sadly my Ursa Saga will kinda screw me, but I don't think it matters. Unless there's some card in my deck that I don't know about. But I will tap it in response to the sacrifice, floating and colorless. And then Oppo will happen to my search. So there's no card in my deck that actually hurts me. So this is the mana crypt that goes to bear. And then in my main phase, I'll tap two. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tap out to cast a Tivit. So from here, it doesn't really matter what people vote because I will make five artifacts. Let's just say they all give me treasures. I will sacrifice them to Time Seed to take an extra turn. And none of my opponents has any flyers. So I will just hit them. So next turn I hit there once, make five more, take next turn, make five more, take next turn. And then along those lines, I need to find, no, I have two extra artifacts. So I have enough to kill bear, sacrifice an extra to kill mons, and then sacrifice time save to kill rhetoric. And that way I kill the table and win the game. Two game. This was a very long match. And uh, maybe I should have fired off that Adnos a little bit earlier. But hey, after the early point in the game, I didn't feel like there was a chance to actually do it without it getting counterspelled. And that Oppo agent prevented me from tutoring for the Oxide Extortion a few times. And the Mimonte Betrayal was counterspelled as well. So many counterspells, so many card drawing engines, and then Yuriko sitting and killing us slowly. But hey, sometimes CDH actually goes a little bit longer than turn 2 or turn 3. I'll just say the counter wars were so interesting. It was like ninja policing a little bit. And... This is one of the situations when you have four people playing blue. You don't really know what to counter, you know, each time. So it's even a better exercise in patience. I don't know. I mean, yeah, there was a point when I did like mental misstep and it was on Pontus Soul Ring, but then 
my preceding opponents played one drops after that and you'd like you kind of have some like counter spell remorse um but you never know what people have in their hand right yeah uh, at, at that time so yeah, it's very interesting to me good game guys yeah that mean that misstep is actually kind of interesting discussion because i'm i'm like by a huge margin well, huge is a bit too aggressive by a large margin i'm the slowest deck at the table so there's an argument for you to like respect me less like you expect me to play more of a police role and therefore forgive me more resources with the hand i have ha uh, the hand i had it was the right thing to counter i had soldering into arcane signet into fish like that countering my soldering there is, is the best outcome at the table i think but there is a discussion to be had like should you counter the slowest deck or should you like let it come into the game so it can help you deal with the faster decks but in this case the game was really slow so it didn't really need me for that and uh, yeah, it just ended up being a slugfest fast. And my hand ended up being a lot slower by getting my soul removed. <laughs> I believe that slowing down the slow deck in the pot that we had in place, I think it was the right move because then you only have to worry about three, two opponents instead of three. And also I think waiting to counter my Imperial Seal and rather countering my Rhystic Study, which is what I tutor for with it, I think that was a, the, the great move. I mean, I was banking on that to to recover from my Mulligan to five. And um, yeah, I think I think I, that was a great move. And yeah, it just kept us, Rotary kept us all in like in slow motion while while he developed and, and tried to kill us with Yuriko. It was a great game. Thank you all. And don't forget to check out Beer's own uh, live stream. In any case, link in the description below of the video, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys! <laughs>